Okay, uh, so last time we looked at one time pad, and uh, I want to share some more information about one time pad. Uh, what are some of the things about one time pad, and what are some of the vulnerabilities of one time pad? Uh, I'm going to start off with something called perfect secrecy. So, according to Shannon, uh, a perfect secrecy that's the definition of perfect secrecy. If any of that cipher achieve that, which means that cipher is a very strong cipher. And that is, a ciphertext should not reveal anything about plain text. When I look at uh, encrypted form of a plain text, I should not get any clue what, what does this ciphertext map to, what type of a plain text it maps to. Uh, so that's the definition of perfect secrecy. And we kind of achieve that perfect secrecy using one time pad. Why? Because if, so let's, let's look at a small equation for it. Because as we know, in one time pad, our message is equal to cipher text and our key, which means the size of my message, we looked at it last time, but just let's look at it mathematically. Uh, message is the same length as your cipher text and your ciphertext is the same length as your key, which means what I'm saying is this. If I have eight character in my ciphertext, then I need to choose a key that has eight characters, which means when I XOR them together, I should get the same eight uh, character uh, ciphertext. That's what I mean. So we're gonna use that, and we're gonna look at it in terms of zero and one domain, all right? So what we're saying is this, my message is equal to ciphertext, my ciphertext is the same length as my key, and they are consist of zeros and ones. Why am I saying zeros and ones? Okay, so let's say if I want to encrypt A. A has some representation in terms of ASCII. ASCII is an 8-bit character. Those eight, Let's say A capital A has a representation. Hypothetically speaking, I, I don't know, you can Google it. Let's say 54. That 54 needs to be converted in a form of a bit, so which means it A uh, 54, A is 54 in ASCII, which has transformed into 8 bits, some sequence of zeros and ones. That's what I mean to say zeros and one. We're looking at it now in terms of modern computer. So when we type A, A is converted to ASCII, ASCII is converted into bits, and so we're looking at it in terms of bits. Okay, we know something else about a uh, one-time pad. That encryption is K comma N, which basically means, okay, so we're looking at a mathematical definition of one-time pad, is actually K XOR with my message. And my decryption, which is D, D is actually K XOR with C, which means K XOR with C, would give me my message back. All right, so far so good. So when I look at the decryption, I can rewrite this equation in terms of this. So this would be K comma E K comma N. All right, so basically what have I done? Decryption is with key and ciphertext is the representation which is given by encryption K XOR with M. So I can rewrite this equation in this form. So this, this I know, encryption, uh, I have my parentheses, k comma n, that is actually k xor with m, and decryption is actually, so this is my ciphertext, so it's k xor with k. So k xor, and, and as we know, this is modulo 2 arithmetic xor, so it has an associative property, so if I were to xor both of those keys, K and K, if same things are there, in XOR you will get nothing, which is zero. So zero XOR with M, you will get your message back. This is the mathematical definition of one time pad. And since the key is the same size as the message, hence we will get the same size of ciphertext, which means this cipher has a little bit of what you call a perfect security, a perfect security. So one of the one of the attack that we can do on one time pad, remember we said there is a thing called Project Venona where a guy decided to use the same key for different uh, message. Uh, so let's call that attack 
this attack is known as two time pad where we're using a same key to encrypt two different messages all right so we're using the same key to encrypt two different messages what will happen if i do that so it's a no no when we are using one time pad it's a no no we don't want to use that all right so what is the thing that we have to do is this so let's say our first cipher text c1 is encryption k comma m1 all right then my c2 is going to be encryption k comma m2 all right so check this out so we're using same key so you you're not seeing the subscript which mean i'm using the same key to encrypt two different messages so this would be k xor with m1 this k xor with m2 so what is two time pad attack this is what the enemy will do if you were to use the same key in one time pad to encrypt two different messages what will do what will happen so you will get c1 here c2 here okay now you have transmitted this or you have sent this uh, message uh, this cipher text and enemy got hold of that message and always remember the rule of security is enemy your adversary is much smarter than you are this is the rule of thumb the, your enemy is much smarter than you so the first thing he can do is this he will take this message c1 and he will try to XOR both of these messages together just for the fun of it since both of these messages are encrypted using the same key so enemy got hold of your ciphertext one and enemy got hold of yours uh, or of your ciphertext two the first thing it will do try to XOR both of them together so let's do that so when you XOR them together i know kc1 is actually consist of k XOR with m1 all right XORing with k XOR with m2 now what will happen based on associativity based on associativity what will happen two when two things are same in XOR they will cancel out and the enemy will come up with what m enemy will come up with the remaining of it's a mixture it will be a mixture of two of these messages m1 and m2 and you have to remember that in any english language any natural language has enough redundancy that if m1 and m2 for using the mixture of m1 and m2 you can decipher what two individual messages are i hope you're getting it in two time pad what will happen that you're using a same key to encrypt two different messages once you encrypt those messages you will get cipher text and after those cipher text let's say you have transmitted those cipher text your enemy got hold of these two cipher text it will take those two cipher text it will xor them together just for the fun of it because xor is the most common logic operator which is being used in cryptography so it will xor this and as we know when you xor it what will happen when you have two things which are same they will cancel out so in which the same key is being used so both of these keys uh, the keys are cancelled out you will left with what mixture of two messages you will you will you will see a mixture but it will actually a mixture of two messages because there's no more key involvement of key and in any natural language you can find out enough redundancy that you will be able to decipher what were the what what is that mixture mixture consist of because the key element is gone so this is known as two time pad attack and it's a very perfect cipher uh, uh, it's a perfect cipher uh, uh, it's, it has perfect secrecy but one of the thing that i said earlier that if you want to send a one gigabit file you got to have one gigabyte of key which actually if you were to use network to do that it will take some time so so i hope you like these final thoughts on uh, on on one time pad so and if you have any questions please leave it in a comment section and uh, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel